Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of Turbo Shed and in this one we're going to do some serious fuel system upgrades. It's been a while since we've done a video. Um, the reason being is that uh, you might remember we blew the engine up in May, uh, knocked the big ends out of it. Uh, we changed the engine on it uh, and then basically spent the summer riding motorbikes and stuff. Uh, but we've been out to plenty of drift days. We've done a two or three at Teesside. We've done two or three up at Driftland um, and our engine off eBay, which we changed the oil in. Um, it's still even got the cam belt on that it came with. Um, that has run great. So we've done five or six drift days now. We're still running seven PSI on the boost. Um, car runs brilliant, uh, the only issues we've had are that it keeps cooking coils and but obviously we were on second hand coils and things uh, and the other thing is that it overheats terribly um, so you've got to do five or ten minutes running and then give it a rest for a while. We think the main reason for that, uh, well two reasons, uh, one is obviously we've strapped an enormous turbo to it which it was never designed to have um, and what's happening is that it's basically out of fuel so it's running weak and it's also got too much ignition timing because it's running normally aspirated ignition. So uh, we need to do something about those so we can get the heat out of the engine as much as anything. So first job is fuel system. Uh, now a standard it has a in-tank pump and it runs about 43 psi fuel pressure uh, that's referenced uh, to the pressure on the manifold as well. But we need to change that uh, because it will not flow enough fuel. So we are going to put a three litre surge tank in we have got twin 044 Bosch pumps um, and we have uh, an AEM um, manifold pressure reference fuel pressure regulator with a gauge on for it and we have a mounting of AN6 pipe and fittings. Uh, that should see us right. So what we're going to do is the way we're going to run the system we are going to use uh, the standard in-tank pump and we're going to use that just as a lift pump. So that's going to run at basically atmospheric pressure and it's going to fill the surge tank. So we'll put it in here on the surge tank um, and the surge tank will have a line from the top of it uh, back to the top of the fuel tank um, in the car. So that will make sure this fuel tank, uh, this surge tank, sorry, is always full. Uh, but it won't be pressurised. Um, it'll be under like 0.1 bar or something. And what we're going to do is we've got two 044 pumps. Um, they've both got one-way valves in there and we've got uh, a Y piece here. So what we're going to do is one of these 044 pumps will run all the time. The other one, when we eventually get the Haltech ECU, uh, we will switch on and off depending on throttle position and RPM. So that's it, because these pumps will run about 400, 450, 500 horsepower or something each. Um, so that should be plenty. Um, and they'll run up to 90 PSI which if we're going to run 43 psi plus 30 psi turbo boost we need at least 75 psi fuel pressure so that's the plan so we're going to put this in the boot beside the old tank um, and we're going to run an6 fuel line to the front um, from the y and we'll put the fuel pressure regulator at the front downstream of the fuel rails um, and we will use the standard return line back to the tank because it's already there um, and obviously that's running no pressure anyway so that's the plan um, there's a bit of modification on fuel rails and things to do. We're going to keep the standard fuel rails, but we're going to feed each rail independently, um, so they should be okay. Uh, and we better get into this. So, first job is making fittings. So, this tank is M18 by 1.5. Allegedly, uh, it was made in China and therefore it's not. So, I've had to make new fittings and adapters for AN6, which we have here because uh, actually the thread is M18.5 because obviously they can't use thread gauges over there. Um, so I've made new fittings in stainless M18.5 one end, AN6 the other, uh, or blanking plugs where we've got no blanks. And I've made M14 ones um, that allow us to screw the 044 pumps directly into the tank, um, which are these ones here. So we'll assemble all that up with copper washers. Uh, we will mount this tank in the boot of the car. Um, and the only other thing we're going to do is I have two fuel filters. Um, we are going to put one fuel filter between the lift pump and this tank. So we have nice filtered fuel in the tank. And belt and braces, I'm also going to put 
another filter between the 044 pump and the fuel rails. So everything will be double filtered um, and by doing that we should make sure we don't get any dirt in the injectors which is obviously a really bad thing. You've got to keep your fuel clean, that's the most important thing. And if you see what's in the bottom of fuel tanks after a few years running you'll understand why we need filters um, because fuel from filling stations is full of all sorts of rubbish. Right, that's it. Let's get the tank in the boot and then we can start doing some plumbing. Well, in order to mount this, um, because the pumps are screwed directly into the tank, I didn't want them pulling on their joints really, uh, because that's not good practice. Um, so I've made this um, sheet metal subframe here. Um, both pumps have got uh, rubber line clamps on that end and the tank bolts uh, to a couple of captive bolts. Um, so I think the best thing to do is with this plate uh, is uh, put this this way around um, and we're going to put it in the middle of the car because that's the safest place um, uh, Just you know if you put it over in the corner or anything else like that and you crash you um, risk uh, rupturing this or damaging it and obviously you don't want that so it's best to have the fuel system as far near the middle as you can um, And being a Lexus you probably have to create a black hole to be able to damage this bit um, So this will sit just here like that and uh, I'll weld it to the floor and put a couple of supports in and that'll do. So you can see I've already cleaned off the floor and the sound deadening where that goes. So we'll put this here, um, I think that'll fit nicely. Now uh, we'll weld it there and put some supports down to the boot well um, and that should be a nice job and nice and secure and everything's neat and in the middle of the car. So let's get the grinder and clean some paint off and get the weld ready. Here's our fuel mounting plate tacked in place, that's okay. Now we'll take the tank and the pumps off now and um, weld it up, put another couple of brackets on the bottom to support it um, and that'll be job done. That'll be a nice strong uh, mounting and a good place to put it I think. Right, let's get the rest of it done. we are, here's our bracket in place, so we've welded it along the back and we've put the three struts in to support it, so that should be the job. So I think we need to give that a quick lick of paint and stop it going rusty, uh, then we can get the pump, there we are, get the pumps and the tank bolted in and then we can start doing some piping and drilling some holes and stuff. Here's our bracket all painted up, probably you can see that, it's getting a bit dark, and I've assembled up the tank. Um, so all the bungs, you can see I've put copper washers on them all and we've made them. So we've got uh, blanking plugs here and here. Uh, this one is the tank return which will go into the top of the fuel tank over here. Uh, this is the feed that will come from the in-tank lift pump. Um, and obviously these are the two outlets which will route down to the front of the engine to be able to do that. So um, I think we'll bolt this on and that will do us for today because it's going to be dark. There we are, job done. That is as solid and as nice as you'd like and it's in the right place in the car and that's not going to go anywhere. So I think we need to start thinking about a bit of pipe work now.
Well, this is our pump feed plumbing all done. So we've got the pipe going forwards into the cabin there, which we'll clip in. Um, we've got our, our fuel filter going to the rails, twin pumps, um, so the Y feeds these um, through the filter. So that's all come together quite nicely. So I think we'll run this fuel line down through into the engine bay now. Uh, and then we'll sort out the um, two pipes for here, which is the feed to the tank and um, the return, which will plumb back into the top of the tank. So here's our fuel line coming through. So we've clipped that so it's all neat. Runs round along the tunnel into the front. Goes along here, along here, up here. And it comes out inside the dash. And I've dug out the heater. Oh, hang on, let me put a torch on. This is the inside of the glove box here. And if you look all the way forward, uh, that's our engine bulkhead. So I've taken the top element of the heater out. Um, it's just tough, we're not going to have it. Uh, but I needed access, um, and the dash on this car is just enormous. So if we look through on the other side here, in the engine bay, or are you in the engine bay? Um, these two holes where the alarm used to go, that's where our fuel pipe will come out. So I think we need to drill that, uh, stick a grommet in, poke the hose through, and then we can look at wiring or piping through to the fuel hose. Okay, here's our fuel feed line through the bulkhead and the end of it. And what we've got to do now is use this Y piece here. And what we'll do is that we need to split that off and take it to each fuel rail. Now, on the Lexus, we have a fuel rail on each side, with a V8. So there's one here and there's one hidden under here that runs under there. So what we've got to do is we've got to feed um, from this pipe here into each fuel rail and then we've got to take a pipe off each fuel rail um, to the fuel pressure regulator and then do that back to the tank return. So on the Lexus there's, on the fuel rails, there's lots of things. So this is the um, pulse damper. So this is the main feed pipe that comes in currently on the car. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut that and I'll put an AN6, I'll weld an AN6 fitting for that so we can put a pipe on it. Uh, and we will keep the pulse uh, the pulse damper but we've got to sort something out on the other fuel rail um, now if you look at the other fuel rail what we've got so the fuel goes in there we have a cross pipe that goes on this banjo across to here and we have another cross pipe at the front which is hidden under here and then we have uh, this which is the standard fuel pressure regulator and that's the fuel return pipe back to the tank so what i need to do is um, feeding this rail is no problem and what I will do is I will um, probably put a banjo on this end to use as the return uh, for that fuel rail. Uh, this one's a bit more tricky because everything's the wrong way around on it. So we're obviously going to get rid of this fuel pressure regulator. And what I will do is I'll probably use that point as the feed. Um, and I will use another pulse damper on this rail because I've got a spare one. And then that will be the feed to that rail. And then I need to sort out the return, um, which ideally needs to come from uh, the other end of the fuel rail, uh, which is up here. So we're going to have to try and sort that out. So I think we need to um, cut this pipe and put the Y on it first, and then start having a look at the other bits. So this is one of the fuel pipes that I've made up, which is the standard one um, that feeds into the pulse damper. Um, and I've made this union here, which is AN6 this end, and brazed it into the pipe on that end. So we got that. Um, but these pulse dampers uh, use a special banjo um, and the banjo is a bigger diameter here than it is here. So this is the uh, pulse damper and what happens is that the fuel actually goes in up the centre here around the outside of that banjo, um, up into the diaphragm in there and then it comes back out the centre of that hole down into the fuel rail. So as I said I'm going to put one of these with a the fuel and I've also got a special washer to get the fuel through. So I'm going to put one of these on each fuel rail. Um, I'm going to do it at the back. So I'm going to take off this back link pipe um, and use that for our, our joint here. And then we will have fuel to our rails. There's the link pipe, which we don't need anymore because in effect this Y does the same job. So what we can do here 
with this is that um, we will screw it into the fuel rail there um, and that will allow us to put the fuel pipes on. So this is the standard fuel feed pipe and obviously I need this end of it because it's got that special banjo that goes over the pressure regulator. So I'm going to cut this off here um, so we've got a bit extra um, and then I can do as I've done with this one you know, which is brazen adapter on which I've made um, and then we can put one on each fuel rail and connect them up to this wire. There we are, there's that pipe. Um, I'll take the rest of the pipe off the engine next time we've got it out because you can't actually get it out because of the wiring harness. Uh, so that's done, now uh, we'll sort that out and we'll get these bits put back together. Here we are, here's our fuel pipe, there's the Y and we've got it feeding into the uh, pulse damper on that side with the connection and we've got the same on this side as well, there's the pulse damper and, uh, and the connection and the pipes here. So we have fuel feed to the rear end of our fuel rails uh, with two pulse dampers. So what we need to do now, oh, the other thing I've done is that where the old pulse damper went I've just put a banjo with a blanking plug in because we're not going to use that port. Right, but we need to get fuel back out of our rails to the fuel pressure regulator and that's going to happen down the front here. And if we look at the front of the fuel rails, there's another link pipe, there's a banjo there and there's one hidden away under here. There we are. And what I'm going to do is take those out and I've got these banjos which are the same diameter and we'll put those in and take that link pipe off and we'll just have these two pipes, these two banjos coming off here and we'll plumb the lines and we'll put fuel pressure regulator over there somewhere um, and then we've got to plumb it back into the return line somehow. Uh, but anyway, the feed's done. There we are. Got that pipe out eventually. So here's our standard banjo bolts and um, I've got these banjos with AN6 fittings and it just so happens that these fit perfectly. So we'll put these on those fuel rails um, and then we can connect our fuel pressure regulator up to them. Right, banjo's in place, one there, one there, we'll make the fuel lines um, and then we'll put the fuel pressure regulator up there, get that mounted uh, and then we can connect the return lines and we'll be done with the bonnet. So here's the fuel pressure regulator, I've just made this um, sheet metal bracket here, so this will mount on the bulkhead here. Um, there's three connections, well there's four actually, uh, this is the connection that goes to the manifold for the reference pressure um, and then we have two ports here um, and they're the ones that will connect from the fuel rail returns and then there's the one out the bottom which is the one that the spring diaphragm works on and uh, that's the one that returns the fuel back to the tank which will plumb into the original tank return line. Uh, so that's it, so we'll get this bolted on and then we can get the pipe work done for this bit too. That's the two return lines in, going over to the fuel pressure regulator. So I'm going to take this off now, which is the old fuel pressure regulator, then we'll blank up that hole. Um, and I've got to run a pipe from this union underneath here, down to the, um, the return pipe to the tank. So we'll get this bit off first and get that blanked up. Uh, run that pipe and we're finished under the bonnet. So you can see our stainless steel spacer there and a banjo bolt just to close off where the uh, fuel pressure regulator used to be. So that's that done. I've also put this pipe on uh, because we've got rid of these pipes that were over the top here. We don't need those anymore. Um, this is the solenoid that used to control the fuel pressure as standard and obviously that's disconnected now because it doesn't do anything. Uh, and I've just put this pressure line in here from the top of the manifold. Uh, that runs across here and goes to the top of the fuel pressure regulator. Uh, so when I actually get the fuel pumps um, set up we'll have to adjust this to get the pressure right and we've got our pressure gauge there. So now next job we'll jack it up and we'll get the return pipes done. So if you look under the car just beside the exhaust what we can see is that um, we've got these pipes here 
and one of these is the fuel pressure line and the other one is the return line um, which doesn't run any pressure. Um, so the return one is this one that's towards us here and it's just on a, uh, um, a clip and a rubber pipe. So all we've got to do is connect into this and that's how our return line sorted. Right, here's the return line, you can just about see it there. Um, and they swage the ends on this copper pipe and that runs down and joins onto the, uh, the rubber pipe that goes back to the original tank return. Um, that's it, uh, we plumbed under the bonnet. So we've got the fuel tank draining, there we are. Um, and it's the banjo that's hidden away up there. So while that's busy doing that, uh, we've got two jobs. Uh, we need to get a fuel line um, from under here out into the top of the car. Which I'm not sure about how that's going to happen. Um, maybe under there. And the other job we've got to do is we've got to uh, put the tank return in, which is this. Um, so this is a bulkhead fitting with the two washers. So what I'll do is I will take um, the level sensor out and we'll drill a hole in the tank here and we'll put that in and then we'll pipe it to here, um, which is the tank return. And that should sort that out. Our tank return union in, um, AN6, same as everything else, so we'll plumb that to here. Um, so when this tank's full, it will feed back into there, which keeps no pressure in this tank. Um, and obviously, it's going to be filled from the lift pump. Um, so that's great. So we'll put the temperature sender back in, uh, sorry, the, um, the fuel level sender back in, make this short bit of pipe, and then as soon as the tank's drained down below, we'll work out a way to get a pipe up here and uh, we'll get that plumbed in too. That's the return pipe done, nice little short one there, that's all it needs. Um, and I've actually swapped these two unions around because I think it'd be better to feed the tank in from the top um, as much so I don't have the pipe sticking out into the, the wheel well here because uh, you know what will happen, um, we'll throw wheels in or something else and we'll catch it. So I'm just going to try and get the fuel pipe up from underneath around this area here somewhere in the floor I guess, um, or maybe through that grommet there perhaps, um, to the banjo underneath. And we'll have a look and see what's going on. Hopefully the fuel is draining. Well this is the standard fuel banjo um, that goes in the bottom of the fuel tank uh, for the fuel feed and the banjo bolt. Amazingly it came out. So I think the easiest thing to do here is, uh, this has got a short flexi pipe here, is I'll cut this off uh, and I'll make a union with an AN6 fitting like we did for the, um, the fuel rail feed pipes uh, and then I can put in an AN6 fitting on there and pipe it through up into the car. Uh, unfortunately, when I made the ones for the fuel rails, I didn't make any spare, um, so I think it's time to fire the lathe up and make another. Well, that's the lathe you can hear in the background, that's making the fittings that we need. Um, so I've done the first one here, so this is the union that comes off the feed at the bottom of the fuel tank, um, that banjo bolt goes up through it. So I've machined this and brazed it on, it's um, you know, just a bit of stainless steel and a um, AN6 fitting, so that'll take that there. What I'm going to do now is get a pipe from here into the car. Um, I'm just making the fitting so I can put the second or the inlet fuel filter for the surge tank in the top of the tank. Um, and this fuel line, and then we're done. It's just a bit awkward getting the fuel line from underneath the tank up into the boot because um, there's like chassis subframes and all sorts of other things in the way. But we'll work it out. Well, that's it. Now about done for today. It's starting to get dark. That's enough. Um, so the last job was I've made an M18.5. Uh, to go into the tank at one end of this um, and I've made an M14 at the other so that will go into our secondary fuel, or our first fuel filter um, because that's going to flow that way so I'll put the feed from the lift pump into there and this is going to sit on top of the tank and screw in um, and that keeps that filter there so we'll put that in uh, and that's it for today um, I'm out of pipe so I need to go and get some more AN6 pipe uh, to do that last pipe run uh, and then we can get on with the wiring so our last fuel line now and believe it or not I think I've put seven or eight meters of braided hose into this car and I've actually run out to do the last hose um, but because this is a low pressure hose which is the tank feed I'm going to use some ethanol proof um, codan fuel line and um, that'll do until I get some more braided line 
So um, I've put this on the tank feed, so we've got to get the end of this down through the floor and to the adapter that we made underneath. So I'll just, um, I think I'll put it through here, we'll put a grommet through, drill that hole, do the union on the other end, and then we need to put some fuel back in the tank and see whether all this is fuel tight. Well, here we are underneath the car. I hope you can see that. It's a bit close. So that's the um, uh, the fuel outlet and return from the tank that comes through the floor of the car. Um, and obviously we've left the return because we've plumbed into that at the front, um, which is the pipe with the clips on. I don't have enough hands to do this. And the um, the new rubber pipe and the union, which hopefully you can see there. If I can get the cam in the right place, there you go. There's our union. Um, that seems to have come together quite nicely um, and that's plumbed through I'm um, using the rubber pipe up into the boot floor that pipe comes up through there and um, just got it looped up there so we've got a bit of extra pipe um, into the fuel filter and that goes into the surge tank so that will fill the surge tank and we've got the uh, return line here back into the top of the tank so now the original pump as you can see will just circulate fuel through this filter and through the surge tank um, and then we've now got these two pumps, uh, both with one-way valves in the end. Uh, the one-way valves have two purposes. Uh, one is that when we're running one in one pump, it stops it backflowing the other. Uh, the second thing is that when we switch the car off, it maintains fuel pressure in the fuel rails. And that's important because um, otherwise you end up with uh, fuel vaporisation in the rails when the car's sat and heat soaked. Um, so it's a good thing to have those in. So that's it, so we've got two pumps, we've got our um, high pressure filter here and that line goes all the way to the front and you've seen the rest of that. The piping is finished. Uh, the next thing we need to do is sort out some electrics. So for the fuel pump in the tank, um, on the left hand side here, this is the fuel pump relay, this yellow one here. There we are, it's got four contacts in the bottom, all here. And uh, the other part of this system is this, which is the uh, fuel pump resistor and what happens is that when the car is running at low revs and low throttle and such like is that it switches this resistor in so the pump in the tank runs like half speed or something uh, and then when you give it varies um, this relay kicks in and bypasses that resistor so that's all this relay does it doesn't actually turn the pump on and off what it does is it changes the speed of the pump by cutting this relay in and out um, so obviously what we're going to do is eventually these two wires here um, for this connector, they're the ones that go to the relay and um, we'll just short those together uh, so the pump in the tank will run all the time. Um, and for our pump at the moment, we're only going to run one pump until we get the Haltech in um, because we don't need any more than that. One pump will do 200 uh, litres an hour. So all I'm going to do is take the feed uh, off here, which is a green wire, um, goes to pin number one I think, which I'll get out under here. Um, and we'll put that to a secondary relay and we'll use that to run the wires um, for hours. So I think for now we'll leave the resistor in and I'll connect in upstream of that. So here we are, I've just clipped the, uh, the connector for the fuel pump relay out of the box. So we've got the four wires in the back of here and here's our wiring diagram. So the four wires that we've got, um, this real thin green red, um, that one goes back to the ECU um, and that's the one that flicks this relay on and off. Um, so we'll leave that alone. We have um, a black red, thick black red, uh, and that goes direct to the fuel pump. We have a um, plain green, and that's our feed, uh, which comes from the circuit opening relay, uh, like the main car control relay. So actually that's the one I want to use as the signal for our auxiliary pump. Um, and then we have this green with a red stripe, and that one goes through to this connector here and to the resistor. Um, and then we have another black red on here which connects in if we look here um, we've got these two lines coming out um, black red and the green one goes through the resistor one doesn't um, and goes to the fuel pump so that's it that's our wires but it's this green one I want to use as the signal um, because that means that whenever the in-tank fuel pump gets a signal uh, so will our pump number one well I've run a wire from the back um, up to the front here which is on this here so this is um, uh, two point, just under 2.5 mil squared, uh, so that should be good for 20 amps. Uh, I think the pumps pull about 15, so we should be okay there. Um, put a fuse holder in and a relay, uh, which will take the signal for this relay off the, um, the other fuel pump relay. And 
uh, we'll just connect all this in. It's going to be slightly temporary because this is only going to do one drift day and then we're going to pull it apart and put the Haltech in. Um, so at least we'll be able to prove out the fuel system. So we will connect this in near the, um, the fuse box because I've already got um, the, the bolt there that I can take lives off. Um, get this wired in um, and then we'll fire the pumps up. So real simple job. Um, so this is the relay um, for the fuel pump. So I've got the feed coming directly off here which is from the main battery feed, uh, 25 amp fuse because it will pull about 15 amps. Um, this is the cable going to the back of the car. Um, the red is the earth cable. I realise that's bad practice but I already had it made up in the drawer. Um, so if I now flick this wire, which I've put as a temporary jumper onto that positive, um, I should be able to hear the fuel pump run. don't know if you can hear that definitely the sound of a fuel pump running in the boot and the wiring in the boot is all finished and done there we are that's a, a really neat job right I think that's it I can wire up the that relay um, and I'll take this feed signal so obviously you can't do that all day I'll take that feed signal and take it off the, um, the green wire here uh, so we'll just run a wire around the engine bay for that um, and then I think we are ready to put the fuel pump relay in, already in. Um, put some fuel in the car um, and fill the surge tank up first um, and if that works and it's not leaking then we will put pressure in the fuel line and set the fuel pressure regulator. So I've just jumped across the, um, the main relay so the, the in-tank pump's running all the time now um, and it means I can do this with the engine off. So now it's time to set the fuel pressure regulator with a screw on the top there. So I'm just going to jump this um, wire over which will put the 044 pump on um, and then check for leaks and get the fuel pressure up. Hope it works. Is the fuel pressure going up? I can hear fuel in the lines. That's 30 psi at the moment, and we want it up at about 45. That's the standard pressure to atmosphere. Hmm. Let's start winding it up. There we are, that's 45. That's standard fuel pressure, so we'll lock the nut off. And we can hear the fuel going through the lines. This all looks good. Can't see any leaks here. There we are, sorted. So, um, I just uh, put the wrong copper washer on there, stupidly. I put a 14mm instead of a 12 on. Just picked the wrong one up. So that's it, we're all dry, we're all done. And uh, that's the 044 running and the in-tank pump. Obviously I've still got them bypassed at this point. Fuel pressure is there. I'm steady at 44 psi. Uh, we've got no leaks here. Um, so I think that's it. I think we need to connect it up and see what happens. Um, I'm a bit concerned that the lift pump, if it's going to run through that resistor box, is actually going to run out of puff. Um, and the 044 will empty the surge tank faster than that can fill it up. Now obviously at the moment it's okay. I've got both of them running flat out. So I think I'm just going to have to bypass that resistor box straight away. But anyway, that's it. Let's um, disconnect this temporary wiring, put the proper relays and stuff in, and uh, see if we can start the car. Here goes. Nervous times. Have we got pumps? We should have when I turn the throttle. Right, we're running. The O4 is working because you can hear it. The more I listen to that. So that's it, we're running, it's beautiful, so the fuel pressure's down, 
uh, but obviously it will be because it's reference to the manifold here. So actually we can check that if I pull this pipe off here. There you go. So we know that's working as well. Um, well, I don't know what to say. I think we're all good. Well, there we are. Uh, that's how to fit um, a fuel system to a Lexus. So you can see that we've rerouted everything. Uh, we've got the 044 pumps in there now. Only one of them's connected. Um, fuel pressure regulator. Everything seems to be working well. So our next thing, 4th of November, we'll be at the track at Teesside and we're going to run it like it is and just check it and make sure the fuel system works okay. And if that's okay, join us in the next episode um, where we are going to be putting in some uh, big RX-8 injectors um, a Haltech Elite 2000 aftermarket ECU and we are going to turn it up to 11.